Ganga for joining us again. Let's talk about Nigeria's foreign direct investment driver in the last year, where we were and where we are right now. I understand that so much, uh, so much success has been recorded uh, in January alone, over 800 billion now in terms of FDI came into the country. I know we've been taking advantage of that, but how much has the federal government been doing? Well, I, 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 you're absolutely right in terms of your assessment. Uh, but, but let's start from where I think you might win. That if you go through the press reports, local press reports today, and uh, the, what the stories we have in the country about the insecurity and all that, there's a very, very strong momentum when you're looking at Nigeria. And that's very simple. The reason for that is that Nigeria is in a place it has for decades. We are in a unique position where in Africa, indeed, is in a high return, high growth uh, environment. It's a, we are in a situation where we have a macro uh, environment is much more stronger than most of it. Not only in Africa, but far much more in, in Nigeria. And what we have seen is that in 2012, uh, Nigeria became the number one destination for investment in Africa, attracted $8.9 billion. That was an increase of about 46%. In addition, the CBN uh, results as of today uh, put the numbers in terms of total foreign investment in the country as of 2012 at about $16 billion. In, 19, in 2011, that number was exactly $7.9 billion. So there's so a big interest, a strong momentum, and we've seen the results in the country today. Now, what has been, because it's, you know, I'm just trying to reconcile that with the fact that, you know, many of our structural uh, challenges still remain if we're overtaking South Africa as a destination hub. What has been the major attraction for foreign investors as regards FDI? Uh, well, it's very simple. Money follows money. At the end of the day, you're looking at, when you want to invest anywhere in the world, you need three things. Actually, you need four things. You need the capital. You need the uh, technology, the know-how. You need to have the raw materials, you need to have the market, and you need to have the returns. Now, in terms of capital and technology, you can move that anywhere in the world. When you, when you talk about raw materials, Nigeria, we have about 84 million hectares of land where almost everything can grow. We have only utilized about 40% of that. We have about 34 uh, different solid minerals in commercial quantity. We're top 10 producer in terms of crude oil and gas. So we have abundance in terms of raw materials. When you're talking about market, we are a country of about 167 million people growing at 3% per annum. We expect to be the third largest nation by 2070 after India and China. We have a market of, uh, we, we are the gateway to ECOWAS, which is about 300 million. And if you look at the D8, it's about 1 billion. Africa in total is about 1 billion. So in terms of market, we are in a unique position. Now, when you talk about returns, there's nowhere in the world you get the level of returns you get in Nigeria. One of your analysts just talked about the Dangote cement. That was down to government policy. Today, for Q1 results, Dangote cement is declaring about 52 billion naira. Extrapolate that for the rest of the year. That's more than about 200 billion. That's more than $1 billion profit after tax in one sector of the economy. So the returns are huge. Growth is there. Some money for money. It's very easy to, to explain. Okay, you've mentioned growth, you've mentioned returns. Uh, how much of the, in terms of job creation and how we've been taking advantage of this uh, new, uh, this FDI coming into the country, have we been able to create jobs? Because I, I assume many of these companies who are coming to the country are not just coming to take money, they're coming to establish perhaps factories and then hire local, local hands to help them. You are, you're absolutely right. If you look at it globally, I think when you look at policy makers globally, they tell you that yes, we have challenges globally in terms of job creation. And the tools that actually policymakers have agreed will make that difference is the tool, is the trade of, uh, the tool of trade and investment. When you investment, of course, you create uh, new businesses and, of course, you create jobs. What is far more important today is that most of the, those investments we are talking about are going to the real sector of the economy. We're talking about investors who are going into cement, where they are going to sugar, we're talking about investors that are going to petrochemicals, investors that are going to turbine production. So if you look at cement, for example, government policy started in 2002. At two million metric tons of, of cement. Today, it used 28.6 million metric tons of cement. 
that sector today, direct and indirect jobs, is close to about 2 million jobs they have created. What this country is doing, we are moving away from a country that has, for decades, been a country that has been exporting materials and exporting jobs, that is creating jobs and industrializing and attracting investment into the real sector of the economy. That is the way forward. That's the only way, historically, every country you've seen all over the world, that's the only way you can move from being a poor nation to a rich nation. You, ha you cannot rely entirely on the export of raw materials. You have to have strong industrial base and related services sector. And the strategy investment into that industrial and services sector. Great job, you create prosperity, wealth, and you become the capital of your people. Now, you, you mentioned a strong industrial base. Now, I, I imagine you're not just focusing on foreign investors, you're also focusing on local investors themselves. How much support have they gotten from the government? Because if one looks at the ease of doing business index, we're not doing too good. So that's why I asked you that question earlier, what the main attraction was for foreign investors. But for local investors, I imagine you're also trying to support them. What have you done, or the ministry done, perhaps in the last one year, to support local investors to help grow our industry? proud and we should be proud of that. so it's not about foreign direct investment only but about local direct investment you heard me talk about Dangote uh, Flamis um, uh, uh, you have companies like uh, NBL, you have Guinness we have a program where we meet with local investors in the country, look at their investment program for the next two to three years and see how we can support them to make sure that, yes, those investments happen, but more importantly, that they increase the level of investment. But I must say one thing. There's only one rule for investors all over the world. It's about, it's about returns for shareholders. It's about returns on investment. And whether you're local or international, you want to make that return, and the return is in Nigeria. Now, it seems like we can only boast of about one, two, three, perhaps five uh, industries.